Okay, great. We've installed Team City, and as you can see from the top menu bar, we've also connected our first build agent. Let's create our first project and get started building. Team City supports a project based hierarchical structure for managing build configurations. Within a project or a sub project, you can propagate settings down, create templates, and much more. A build configuration is a collection of settings that together create a runnable job that can be executed on the build agent. Within a build configuration, you specify individual build steps, which can be things like command line script executions, build runner calls to tools like Maven, MS Build, Ant, and others. You can also configure things like build triggers, failure conditions, specify parameters and dependencies, and create build pipelines, or as they're known in Team City, build chains. In version 2019.1, TeamCity introduced an experimental UI option as an alternative to the classic UI. You can access the experimental UI by clicking on the blue flask in the top right corner. When you sign into TeamCity for the first time, it automatically offers to switch you to the experimental UI and will remember your choice. You can change the default UI representation anytime in the My Settings and Tools page in the Username dropdown. We'll be using the classic UI for these tutorials. All build configurations must belong to a project, so as our first step, let's create a project. We'll start by connecting to our version control system. We support a wide range of VCS systems, and we also offer the ability to connect directly with hosted VCS systems like GitHub, Bitbucket, Azure, and GitLab. For our demo today, we'll be building a Java Spring-based open source web application called Pet Clinic. I'm using a public fork of this project, so there's no need to specify a username or password. TeamCity will verify the connection and suggest a recommendation for the project name, as well as the name of your first build configuration. In this configuration, let's create a stage that runs a build and executes our tests. Later, we'll separate these into two separate stages and create a build chain. TeamCity will attempt to automatically detect what build steps might be required by scanning the VCS repository. This project contains a palm.xml file, so it knows there's likely a Maven build step that needs to be executed. You can select the build steps you want to configure or manually configure your own, which is what we'll do here. Before we continue, let's take a look at where we are in the UI. We've created a project and an empty build configuration, and now we're editing our build configuration. On the left side of the screen, you can see where we are currently in the build steps page, where we will add our first step. From here, the runner type dropdown is going to give us a list of out of the box build runners that are available with Team City. These runners provide easy integration and setup for many common build tools like .NET, Ant, Gradle, Maven, Xcode, and more. A generic command line runner is also available for executing scripts or other third-party tools used in your software development tool stack. Let's choose Maven as our runner type and configure the build step. This project will run unit tests and create a deployable jar artifact using the maven phase package. You'll notice it already is picking up the path to the palm.xml file, but you can also use the tree view on the right to locate it in your version control system. That's all we need to do before we save this configuration, but let's take a look at some of the advanced options available. TeamCity supports adding conditional build steps. For example, you may wanna add a build step only in a particular branch. We also allow you to run build steps within a Docker container. This can be useful if you don't want to manage the software on the build agent. For example, let's say you need to use a specific version of Maven that may not be installed on all of your build agents. With this feature, TeamCity is going to pull down the specified Maven image and execute the build steps inside of that Docker container. There's no need to worry about which agents do or do not have the right version installed. We'll cover some of these more advanced use cases in other videos. For now, let's simply save our build step. We'll improve upon this configuration later, but we have everything we need to run our first build configuration. 
Clicking the Run button will add it to the queue, search for an available build agent, and run the build configuration. We can also select the ellipses to specify additional settings before adding it to the build queue. Here, we can choose which agent to execute the build on, set configuration parameters, or make other changes to the build behavior. For the simple build configuration, we'll accept the default. Since we have an available build agent and nothing is waiting on the queue, this build will start right away. Team City is going to navigate us to a new screen, and from this page we can monitor the build as it runs. The build log can be reviewed in real time, along with the results of any tests that are being executed. We can click on the Team City logo on the top left corner to navigate back to the project's overview page. Here, we can see a list of all of our projects, the build configurations and run histories for those projects, as well as the current state of any running build. Full role-based access control is also available to limit project visibility and the actions that users have access to within your environment. While this build completes, let's briefly take a look at a larger working instance of Team City. This instance hosts open source projects from both JetBrains and across the web. And as you can see, we have a lot of active development happening on this server right now. If we scroll down to our Kotlin public projects, we can see a bunch of active builds happening on both the main and feature branches. As with most development projects, some configurations are in a passing state while others are failing. From this page, we can also view basic information about our builds, including what changes were introduced for that build, when the build completed, and for running builds, a time estimate of when the build is expected to complete. For completed builds that have generated artifacts, we can also view those from this home screen. We'll show you how to work with artifacts a little bit later. Navigating back to our pet clinic project, you'll notice our build has successfully completed with all of our tests passing. We can click on the build number to see more information about that particular run. The build logs, test data, and other information are available by navigating through the top tabs. From this page, we can also navigate back into the edit screen to make changes to our build configuration. In the next video, we'll explore build triggers, failure conditions, and more, and we'll also demonstrate how TeamCity works in a typical SDLC workflow.